when you solve a heat equation or a Laplace equation or some other PDEs, and I'm saying this, and we, we haven't even got to any PDEs yet. Oh, I, I did the wave equation, but that doesn't require such a thing. Um, along the way, we will end up having to solve one of these sturm liouville problems. And it, it looks very complicated, right? In fact, I have to look at some Wikipedia to write this down, so I don't remember this myself. Um, but what I want you to know is that there's A and there's B, and these are two points on the x-axis, so this is really an endpoint value problem, okay? Uh, I have this cryptic alpha 1 squared plus alpha 2 squared bigger than 0. Well, uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 are real numbers, so the only way this could be equal to 0 will be when both of them are 0. So, so this is just a uh, slick way to say that at least one of these should be non-zero, okay? So you could have 1 and 0, which would mean that y of a is 0, right? Or the other way around, you could have 0 and 1, which means y prime of 0 is 0, okay? So you can have any mix of these uh, condition for the, the value of y or y prime at the two endpoints, a and b. And inside this interval a to b, you want this equation told. Uh, so there, there are several things that solutions of this will satisfy. Uh, one, one thing is that uh, I forgot that px, qx, some of these should be positive, uh, I forgot. Um, but the important thing is that uh, in this case, because it's 0 and 0, uh, there are certain values of lambda where uh, you have either unique solution or infinitely many. There's never this case where uh, a, a lambda where you get no solution at all because we do know that it has at least one solution, which is what? If y of 0 is 0, and y of x is 0, then this is automatically satisfied, right? And these two will be automatically satisfied as well. So, so the trivial solution, uh, the, the zero solution is called the trivial solution because it's, it's like you don't have to do any work. You already know that there's a solution, right? Yeah. So uh, you always have a solution, that, that's for sure. However, there are certain values of lambda where you have a non-zero solution other than zero, and, and because in that case you have a, a non-zero solution, any multiple of that will again be a solution, so you, you get the case when you have infinitely many solutions. Okay? So, and, and that's controlled by this lambda value. So, uh, because for the simplest case, uh, I don't have to do deal with this general one. Uh, let me just show you a simple one, and we will worry about the general theory of the sturm liouville much, much later. Okay? So I, I want to show you the following equation, which is uh, when you just set qx as 0, and then you, get, you set px as just 1. That makes it really simple, right? And then wx as 1 as well. So let's see what that gives us. It's a ddx ddx of y equals to lambda times y. Okay. And uh, since this is just saying second derivative, this just means you differentiate twice. That's the version that we need in order to solve the heat equation uh, and also the Laplace differential equation. Uh, so we will 
we will focus on this in the beginning. Okay? Then, uh, when we have some more complicated boundaries, so boundary conditions, then you, you have to go back to this with some, some other values. And we'll naturally arrive at those pieces. Okay? Um, now, this thing here is what's called an operator. Uh, an operator is a function of functions. Okay? If you take in a function, you apply an operator, you get a function. Okay? Uh, what's a function? It takes some input and it gives you output, right? Now, if a function takes in functions as input and it gives you output as a function, then that's called an operator. Okay? Uh, another thing is there's something called uh, Ah, sorry for, for that. Um, there's the operator, there's the... Oh, I can't believe it. Like this. So there's, there's another one where you take in functions and you get a, a value. Okay. That's called... I can't remember. Okay, well, anyway, so, so you have that. And uh, yesterday I was talking about how Fourier series acts on this vector space called, called L2, right? So, uh, in the tradition where you view functions as vectors, uh, well here, there's a stronger requirement that uh, for this equation to hold, it has to be differentiable twice, right? So, but there's another function space which also has that thing called Sobolev space. Uh, but but uh, if you think of these as vectors, right, and that's there's some operator of vectors. Okay? Uh, what's that? Uh, you also learned in linear algebra that operators, well, in linear algebra context, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, you have an operator which is a matrix, right? times a vector, and if you write down this equation, and if V is a non-trivial vector, it's a non-zero vector, then what is lambda called? Eigenvalue. Eigenvalue, and V is called? Eigenvector. Eigenvector, right? Okay. And uh, <clears throat> sturm niuvo viewed in that way, is a special kind of problem where the operator on the left side is uh, something called a positive definite self-adjoint operator. Okay? So it's uh, something that you, you learn in linear algebra uh, that if you have a self-adjoint operator then all its eigenvalues are real. Okay? And uh, being positive definite means that all the eigenvalues are positive. Okay? So uh, what that tells us here would be that this equation uh, would have a non-zero solution for certain values of lambda and those lambdas will be called eigenvalues just like here and such non-zero function y will be called eigenfunctions okay? instead of eigenvectors we call it eigenfunctions and such values of lambda will always be real and it just happens that this special operator, negative second derivative, will always have a non-negative. Uh, yeah, so sorry, it's not uh, it's not positive definite. It's a, a positive semi-definite, me meaning that you could have zero as an eigenvalue. Okay? So uh, you could, in some cases, have zero as an eigenvalue, but it never has an eigenvalue that's negative. Okay. <coughs> All right, so let me try to solve this with a very special example. So, so you're saying lambda is going to be always positive or zero? Yeah, yeah. For, for this one, okay. And then there's some other operators that we'll be working with, and they will also have that property as well. Okay, so 
example one, find eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of y double prime plus lambda y equal to zero. And remember, this is second derivative, and if I move this to the other side, it's just this, right? Yeah. Okay, with, I have to provide the boundary condition, and at the endpoint value problem, we have to uh, provide the endpoint value, and we'll call y of 0 is 0, and y of 1 is 0. Okay. So, solution. Uh, Let's see what happens if lambda is negative. If lambda is negative, right, then the solution of this gives you r squared plus lambda equal to zero, whose solution is r equals to plus minus square root of lambda, negative lambda. So you get two, two roots, right? So one is positive, the other is... So let's call this uh, uh, plus minus a. Okay, a is the, this value. Okay? Then, what's the general solution? C1, e to the ax, C2, e to the negative ax, right? Because the two roots are a and negative a, you get those two as the solution. Now, y of 0 is C1 plus C2, right? And that has to equal to 0, right? Now, what's y of 1, the c1 times e the a, plus c2 times e the negative a. Now, this says that c2 is negative c1. So that says c1 e to the a minus c1 e to the negative a. And then uh, c1 e to the a minus e to the negative a. Well, we are, we are taking the a to be the positive one, right? So this thing here is bigger than 1, whereas this is 1 over e to the a, so this will be less than 1, okay? Because this denominator is bigger than 1. So this is some positive value. Do you agree? And that has to equal to what? Our y1 is 0. So if you set 0 equal to this, and you divide by this positive value, you get c1s. 0, C2s, negative C1, so it's 0, right? That means y must be 0. Now, can that be an eigenfunction? No. Why? Because that's a trivial function, okay? Trivial solutions are not permitted as eigenfunctions. Just like for eigenvectors, you don't allow 0 vectors, right? Okay. So as I said, uh, this this negative second derivative operator is a, a positive semi-definite operator. So it will never have lambda less than zero. So uh, from now on, for for this simple case, we'll ne we'll actually skip this part. Okay. You can. I just wanted to show you why that happens, but uh, it's a general theory that you're not going to have a negative eigenvalue. Right. So let's do the case when lambda is 0. Okay, when lambda is 0, you get r squared plus 0 equals to 0. The characteristic equation will be just simply r squared plus lambda equals to 0, but lambda is 0, so you get r squared as 0, which means r is 0, 0. It's a uh, multiplicity 2 solution, right? So in that case, what's the solution? y equals 2, c1 e to the 0x, so c2 e to the 0x, but these two are the same, so you need to change this a little bit. How? Multiply by x. You multiply by x, right? But then that's c1 plus c2x, <coughs> and y of 0 is a c1 plus c2 times 0, and since this has to be 0, you get c1 is 0. 
and y of 1 will now be c1 plus c2, but since c1 is 0, you get just c2, and that has to be 0. <coughs> okay, so what's the conclusion in this case? What's the conclusion? C1 is 0, C2 is 0, therefore, yes? Lambda equals 0 is an eigenvalue? Is, is not an eigenvalue because it's a, it's a trivial solution again. So lambda equal to 0 is not an eigenvalue. So, so far we failed to find any eigenvalues. But now let's do the third case where lambda is positive. Right? Lambda is positive if r equals to plus or minus square root of negative x. And because lambda is positive, this is indeed an imaginary number. You can think of this as 0 plus minus square root of lambda times i, right? Okay. Which means the solution is e to the 0x times c1 times cosine square root of lambda x plus c2 sine square root of lambda x. Again, you use the two endpoint value conditions. y of 0, if you plug in 0 here, you see that <coughs> you just get c1, right? Sine of 0 is 0, e to 0 is 1, cosine 0 is 1, so you get c1 as y of 0. So c1 must be C1 must be 0. Okay. All right, that's depressing. We, we want non-zero, right? But we're just keep, we keep getting 0, okay? But uh, this last case will be something different, okay? So if you have e to the a times C, uh, C1, 0. So we just have C2 sine square root of lambda times 1 equal to 0. Okay. Uh, now this is non-zero, so we can just divide both sides by e to the a. We have c two sine square root lambda equals to zero. Okay. So we could either have c two as zero or sine of square root of lambda equals to zero. But do we want c two as zero? Why not? Because then we're going to have trivial solutions, right? So since C2 equals to 0 implies Y equal to 0, if both C1 and C2 are 0, uh, we need the other one to be 0. Okay. Now, question mark. Sign of what is 0? What goes in here? N pi. N pi, right, exactly. N pi. Since we know that, then this would happen that's when square root of lambda is equal to N pi, which means lambda must be N squared pi squared. Okay? So now we've solved this sturm liouville problem for the simplest case, uh, which is the answer is that eigenvalues are are lambda equals to n squared pi squared okay? and eigenfunctions are so, so just like uh, in linear algebra if you have an eigenvector then any non-zero multiple of that will be an eigenvector as well, right? Uh, but you just write down one representative for that, right? So you don't want to write down the general one. See, uh, since, oh, sorry, this is not a, it's zero. I made a mistake here. This is just e to the zero part. So uh, that doesn't exist. So e to the zero power is zero. And then, uh, C1 is 0, so that doesn't exist. So the solutions are C2 sine square root of lambda x, right? But we don't want to write C2 because that's just a multiple 
of this function. Okay? So we just write down the eigenfunctions as sine of square root of lambda x, but what's square root of lambda? That's n pi, right? So it's n pi x. And there's something that you must write, which is n is 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Okay? If, you, if you forget to write this, then it will be one point off for any exam or quiz. Okay? That's important. Because sometimes uh, n would start from 0. For different boundary cases, you might have a case when you have 0 as an eigenvalue. And you may have a non-trivial function at lambda equal to 0. Here, we didn't. We only see positive identity values. So why are we getting rid of c? c2? Uh, it's just like when you do eigenvectors, you don't write all the possible eigenvectors. You just write one possible right. eigenvector, right? Right. So, I mean, you could write two, three, four, five, but what's the point? You just want to write down the simplest one, right? So that's what you write. Okay. 